A new minister at Veterans Affairs this week, an embattled file that the Conservative government has been struggling to address. After months of calls for Julian Fantino to resign, on Monday the Prime Minister replaced Fantino with Aaron O'Toole, a young MP and a veteran himself. Will it be enough to turn the file around for this government? Joining me now in an exclusive interview is the minister himself, Aaron O'Toole, in our Toronto studios. Uh, minister, I'd like to begin by asking you, what are you going to change on this file? Well, Mercedes, um, thanks for having me. And I think the most important thing to change is, is actually the way dialogue takes place on veterans' issues. Canadians uh, of all political stripes across the country are very passionate about our men and women in uniform. And I want to make sure I bring in uh, an approach that respects the debate, makes it a respectful debate, and an informed debate, because there's a lot of... Um, a lot of good things happening you know, on the veterans front but there are some challenges and let's let's work on the challenges and try and understand why they're coming up and, and not not sort of have a uh, an atmosphere of of anger and mistrust and attacks let's let's talk about the challenges we have and work to fix them because i think all canadians support our men and women who've served certainly i do and my initial talks with uh, leading veterans groups make me think that uh, we're making progress and we can make more in the coming months. Now, you know this file very well. Uh, when I first met you, you weren't a politician yet. You were working with True Patriot Love, establishing that. You were on board Sea Kings as a navigator, so you certainly are aware of what it is to be operational and some of the challenges that are faced. When you talk about these challenges, beyond just the communications on the file, what are your priorities to deal with? We've heard uh, about the new Veterans Charter. That's something that's become very political. We've heard a lot about the Equitas lawsuit. We've heard a lot about some of the veterans uh, areas that have been closed down and changed into Service Canada. Uh, are any of those on your priority list? And if not, what is policy-wise? I'm looking at everything very, very quickly, Mercedes. As you said, I've, I've worked on these issues even before I was an MP. And as an MP, I've been very hard, hard working on a lot of them. Um, the, the main challenge that we face, and, and some of the issues you highlighted there, stems from the fact that we're in a modern Canada that now has veterans who are traditional war veterans in their 80s and 90s, but we have combat veterans in their 20s and 30s, some who sustained very serious injuries on behalf of our country. You've interviewed uh, many Mercedes, you've visited them in the field. Veterans Affairs Canada for 50 years never had that circumstance. You know, once we had the World War II and the Korean War veterans, uh, Veterans Affairs as an organization was structured around serving them. And then there were our NATO and UN missions, and those Canadians served valiantly. And there was training incidents and, and issues, but we didn't see the form of in injuries and deaths in combat until we had 12 years of Afghanistan. And the organization has to move better at addressing the needs of both cohorts, the old and young. Uh, as a personal uh, area of focus for me has been mental health, and that's something actually our government's moved very swiftly on. 2002 was the first year Canada had an operational stress injury clinic. Um, and there was a few of them opened by the previous government. We're opening 17, many are open now, because we see a rising new need of mental health. And it's not just the soldier, because the mental health affects their transition, it affects their relationships, it affects their family. So what can we do to make sure that we know, we create an environment where the stigma is being reduced, they can come forward, get the help, support the families. We've been doing a lot of that in the last few years. We need to do some more. Well, and Aaron, I want, I want to talk to you about what more you can do on that file. For example, the Auditor General's report highlighted how long some people are waiting in order to be seen. And as you know, when you're talking about mental health in particular, uh, that can be a very critical time to be able to act. Uh, I know you've talked to a lot of veterans. I've talked to a lot of veterans who say that sometimes they feel their concerns are not being taken seriously, uh, not only by the politicians, but also by some of the bureaucrats uh, who are running these files. Do you have any plans to address that? Well, I think we've got to make sure the entire department is, is focused on these rising new needs, including mental health. We've done things as a government in the last few years to not just expand treatment for the veterans themselves, but also to expand treatment and training to spouses, partners, people that are not only dealing with the challenges in the house, but administering care 
for our veterans. We also have to be open, Mercedes, to working with third-party groups. So Veterans Affairs does a great job in a number of things, but True Patriot Love, Wounded Warriors, I was talking to the Veterans Transition Program out of BC just today. Um, there's some great groups at universities and, and charitable sectors that are doing work sometimes even faster. So our government has already uh, embraced the look at uh, therapy dogs. We have a pilot underway now. Uh, that was work that Wounded Warriors and some other groups started. Veterans Affairs is now investing in it because with mental health in particular, there is no cookie cutter solution. We're going to have to come up with a variety of programs that, you seek, uh, that meet the unique needs of each veteran and their personal circumstance. Aaron, we're, we're basically out of time, but I do think this is an important question to ask you before we wrap. I think you're seen as having a lot more empathy than your predecessor, Julian Fantino, but if none of the policies on this file change, do you think you risk losing the veterans' vote in the next election? Uh, when the Prime Minister uh, offered me this tremendous opportunity, Mercedes, we had a very uh, in-depth conversation on a whole range of issues. The Prime Minister is very passionate about what we've already done, increasing investments in huge areas, modernizing Veterans Affairs. He is giving me uh, a renewed mandate to continue that. Uh, this is beyond politics, and I've always said that. My speeches in the House have said that. This is about getting the balance right, and I'm also hoping to make sure that we have that respectful and informed dialogue that I talked about at the outset, and that that's why I wanted to appear with you because you understand these issues. You've worked with men and women in uniform, and I'm looking forward to meeting many more of them across the country. Aaron, thank you very much for coming on today. We appreciate your time, Minister. Thank you very much.